In our last lecture module, we looked at issues that arise from an attempt to uncritically accept the moral dictates of some authoritative moral report. And specifically, we focused on interpretation. We noted that many authoritative moral texts, like the Bible or the Quran or the Book of Mormon, are often silent regarding issues that have evolved in our society because of our technology or the number of people and so on. And as a result, there's a temptation to try to use that authoritative text to develop prescriptions for those situations through interpretation. And this happens all the time. It happens in secular texts. It happens with religious texts. But the danger of interpretations is that they can be used as a vehicle through which a particular moral view gains the guise of an authoritative moral prescription when it really doesn't have that basis in the text itself and it really hasn't gone through the process of giving and evaluating reasons or appealing to general principles. In this lecture module, we're going to turn our attention to a second issue that arises. And that issue is, if we're trying to uncritically accept the dictates of some authoritative moral report, what do we do when it appears that that report contains conflicting, inconsistent, or contradictory moral prescriptions? In our case study here is going to be the Ten Commandments. Now, people tend to think of the Ten Commandments as a paradigm case of unproblematic moral dictates from the Judeo-Christian God. Unfortunately, the Ten Commandments actually present an example of multiple conflicting reports. And as a result, we see that again, an independent knowledge of moral norms and moral reasoning is useful in trying to navigate a purported authoritative moral report when we discover that that report contains conflicting, inconsistent, or contradictory moral prescriptions. Now, you may say, look, Wallace, I've read the Bible, or I go to church on Sundays, and there's just one version of the Ten Commandments. This is some crazy philosopher's myth. But in fact, this is pretty standard biblical scholarship. You can read about it, if you want to, in the source that I've noted here at the bottom of this lecture slot. The person who is doing our speaking in these two slides is Gary Greenberg. And he's a biblical scholar, and like many biblical scholars, he argues that the Bible has several contradictory accounts of what laws the Israelites were given, how many they received, and where and when they got them. The traditional version of the Ten Commandments, according to the scholarship, was actually a pretty late invention. It was probably created no earlier than the 7th century BCE. So the Bible contains three different versions of the Ten Commandments story. There's the traditional Ten Commandments. This story is given in Exodus 21 through 18 and in Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 21. Then there is what's called the ritual Ten Commandments, and that's given in Exodus 34, 12 through 26. Finally, there is what's called the judgments, and they're given in Exodus 20, 22 through 23, 26. These versions differ in order, specifics, and likely time of origin. There isn't a single set of commandments presented unproblematically and completely consistently within the context of the Old Testament. Now you might say, well, hey, the Old Testament is the Old Covenant, and the New Testament is the New Covenant, so what it says in the New Testament is what's really important. Or you might say something like, well, look, we accept the traditional Ten Commandments and these other commandments uh, we don't recognize. And this brings us to our third and final interpretive problem. We'll begin our discussion of it in this module, and we'll finish it in the next module. So the final issue that we want to look at concerns dictates in the Bible that seem to run contrary to what many people currently think of as moral. Now, without a prior moral theory, one will seemingly accept each and every one of the dictates that we're going to look at as on equal footing with commandments like thou shalt not kill. And in fact, if we enforce these, there would be a significantly larger number of death penalties. There'd be dramatic changes in the way that we conduct society and so on. 
But in fact, individuals and societies, they just tend not to enforce all of the dictates from their authoritative moral sources. Rather, they tend to engage in selective adherence, picking and choosing among dictates. We'll finish this module by looking at one example, passages from both the Old and the New Testament that seem to endorse slavery and even prescribe behavior for slaves. I won't read every single one of the passages from the Bible. I'll just select one or two of them to give you a flavor of it, but you can always stop the video and read through the passages on your own if you're interested or curious. We nowadays think of slavery as morally wrong. However, in the New Testament, we find passages like this. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eye is on you and to win their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. And in fact, in the old days of slavery in the United States, slave masters oftentimes would read this to slaves to encourage them to be accepting and docile of their situation and not to rebel. We find similar passages in the Old Testament as well. This next one from Leviticus is a nice example. Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. This seems to suggest that it's not okay to get slaves from within the United States, but you can buy them from Canada and Mexico and that would be perfectly okay. In the next lecture module, we'll pick up this topic and look at some other examples.